This video is about why I think when we model and use an antenna, we should consider the five degrees as a benchmark. And that's what we're doing. Well, very good day, uh, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Now, what I'm about to tell you is vitally important. So, you know, strap in, if you like. I will try and create a short, or if you've got no time at all, in the description, what I'll do is I'll put a reasonable analysis of this video. Okay, so there's been some chit chat around the internet for the last couple of months of people um, dispelling the myth of the five degree takeoff angle. So we're gonna cover that and look at some ARRL documentation. This individual, he's got a YouTube channel suggesting that this myth's been going around for five or six years. It is not actually, it's been going around for about 80, 90 years. But now I'm lucky in that I have 16 UK creators on a WhatsApp group. Plus I've got Roly ZL1BQD, I've got John, NJ4Z, you know, Tom Rowlands, M0RMY. So I've got about 20 people I can talk to uh, and they can talk to as well. If we are debating an idea, like, am I wrong with this? Am I right with this? What do you think? And so on and so forth. So I'm lucky because I just put some questions out to the chaps and they're the ones who came back with actually all the data. So the main sort of problem or debate has been out there that the myth's been around for five and six years and was produced by newcomers, because they've only been doing this 21 years, <laughs> right? Using modeling software. And that's absolutely right. And experience, by the way. And the software that we use is free, so it's unlikely to be accurate enough. I'll explain why that's wrong. And this five deg degree angle, and to quote this individual, does not appear to exist. And I'll show you where it exists. Okay, that's the important thing. Because we want to know where the DX is coming from. So when we do design an antenna, and I can hear the guy in Japan really well, but you can't. Japan, Kilo One, Bravo, Quebec, Sierra. Japan, America, Troy, Papa, Julius, Rima. Why is that? And the other thing is that the, the, the individual thinks that the optimum angle for a quarter wave is about 26 degrees. No, that's his highest gain, all right? It's not the optimum angle for DX though. This individual also tells us to buy the ARRL handbook. Good bit of information. And if only you do it once every 10 or 15 years, because it's quite an expensive book, you know, put it on your Christmas list, it's fantastic. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, talk about the myth. Let's just talk specifically why I, right. This video is about why I think when we model and use an antenna, we should consider the five degrees as a benchmark. And that's what we're doing. Now, the ARRL did uh, create a really nice uh, document and it was called, and I'll, I'll put a link to this. It's, it's on the ARRL site. It was actually a guide for city planners and amateur radio operators. And it was to demonstrate why an amateur radio operator needed a very big tower to get the angle lower. All right, so that's why. So it's got a very good executive summary and it's about, you know, the fact the earth is a sphere and it's got some very good um, graphics and how that, um, you know, being a globe, a sphere, if you like, and that our signals bounce off the, well, they refract off the ionosphere and there's a nice little graphic here showing that very well and that the skip disc, the lower down you become and take your takeoff angle is, the further you'll get. And it's actually saying the maximum distance that may normally be covered by a single hop is about two and a half thousand miles. And um, if you look at your greatest contacts very often it'll be around the 2000 mile they're the easy one because it's a kind of one hop you know i don't know how how far cyprus is for, from here but it, it's under that it's probably a thousand miles with a nice easy hop so that's why i can normally get to cyprus from here for instance the other side of the mediterranean all right so let's skip all this let's go to the analysis the ARRL have done and uh, in conjunction with with other people and um, because there's some the military did this after the second world war as well uh, i think the american military and this is the graph 
that I want to look at. Ignore the blue and red and purple dots and triangles. We can do that another day. Another day. It's the black vertical bars that are very interesting. So this is 14 megahertz from Boston to Europe. If you don't know where Boston is, it's just north of New York. There it is, it says Boston here. So for Europeans, that's our um, East Coast. And as you probably heard on my live streams, getting to East Coast is, is fairly easy. Similarly, if you're in the New York, you know, Newfoundland type area, even down as far as Florida, you'll find Europe a lot easier to get to than you will from the West Coast. So what it's saying here is this is the elevation response patterns of three Yagis at 120, 70 and 35 feet over flat ground. Forget the rest. All we need to do is the eleva elevation angle in degrees from one here to 25 there and a percent on the vertical axis, the A Y axis. So we can see that about 10% of the time our signals are at around 10 degrees, 12 degrees, 13 degrees. Then we've got five degree mark here for about 13% of the time. So that already at a quarter of the time on 14 megahertz, our signals are going between four and five degrees. Now, by the way, yeah, how did they measure this? There's some really clever people out there that genuinely have measured all this, all right? We don't need to go into the ifs and buts. This is, you know, if you don't trust the ARRLs, why would you trust me, for instance, as an individual? But this data exists on the internet. If I find any more, I'll put them in the description links for you to read. So that's quite interesting. And then if we scroll down a bit further, we'll see now it's Boston to Sydney. All right, so that's going from Boston here, basically around the other side of the world. All right, again, this is on um, 14 megahertz, so the 20 meter band. So at one degree was at 10% of the time, okay? And I would say the first, I mean, yeah, well, there's nothing beyond nine degrees. Nothing beyond nine degrees, okay? So it's a good average, just five degrees. But I'll tell you why I like the benchmark of five degrees, okay? Your signals aren't necessarily traveling at five degrees elevation. I'll tell you why I like it in a minute. On 28 megahertz, Boston to Europe, that nice little hop again, is anywhere between one and 17 degrees. And if we scroll down a little bit further to talk now about seven megahertz, for instance, San Francisco to Europe, a big hop, okay? So we're into three and a half thousand miles, something like that. You'll see it's all basically 10 degrees and under. It's a bit, a bit higher as well. On the 80 meter band, sometimes long DX can be as high as 20. But anyway, right, another quick one here uh, to Japan. Again, all under, mm, majority of that is under 10 degrees. And I think the last one here, this was from K5MA. I don't know where that is. I presume it is. This looks like the other side of the world from there to Japan is at 32% of the time. The DX was arriving at one degree off the horizon. And by the way, on 40 meters, your signal will travel straight through a house, okay? Easily, right? No, no worries about that. But I asked uh, Tim his analysis of all this. and Did I get it wrong or right or whatever else? So this uh, Tim's response was, um, so I've analyzed those ARRL figures by looking at each of the six graphs. And first of all, spotting the top five elevation angles for each graph. I then calculated the average of these five for each graph. The graph with the lowest takeoff take angle average for its top five angles was at three degrees. And the graph with the highest top five angles was 7.6 degrees. So five degrees is almost bang in between. Finally, I averaged the average across all graphs, for the top five most popular DS angles, and the result, 5.3 degrees. Sorry about the rambling here, but to suffice to say, five degrees is about right. So believe you me, five degrees, but that's actually not why I use it. That's not why I use it, I promise. I use it because when I was, we, we had a vertical at the scout field. Okay, I'll just draw it like that. We also had at our, our, our uh, ability to use a two element was a D, four DX commander poles, 
on the 40 meter band. And I wanted to know how much better a 40 meter two element Yagi was gonna be compared to, actually it was three verticals in a row and was it worth it? Now, I'm not gonna do all the modeling now, but there's a certain point in time that if you look at the, the plots of your, your the amount of uh, gain you, you've got, there's a certain point in time where if you measure at 10 degrees off a horizon, you can be convinced that this might be better, not this. But bearing in mind that a lot of the, a lot, sorry, but bearing in mind a lot of the DX is coming in lower than eight degrees, the stuff that really lights your bulb. It's really important when you're doing modeling is to work out where well, you can convince yourself that at 20 degrees, it's great, right? Because a dipole will outperform, certainly at 30 degrees, will outperform a vertical at 30 degrees. Now, the maximum distance I can get, sorry, the crossover point between a vertical and a dipole is, I don't know, let's say it's 20 degrees, all right? So in other words, you'll be better off with a vertical for less than 20 degrees. This is why it's called a DX commander, because if you've just seen from all the, the graphs here, it performs better um, at lower angle. Now, there's some chit chat as well about the pseudo Brewster angle. Now, the pseudo Brewster angle and CBIC, CBIC, sorry, wrote a very good article about pseudo Brewster angles. Um, it's called the pseudo Brewster angle because the Brewster angle is actually about optics. We call it pseudo because it's kind of similar, but, but it's not. Now, the thing is, the mathematics on a software model considers the pseudo Brewster angle anyway. This is the point where you've, you've heard of the, a sea amplifier, an ocean amplifier, all right? So if you've got, let's go here. If you've got a vertical, now I'm not very good at drawing these, so I'll just draw kind of two circles-ish, right? If you've got a vertical and you're looking at side on, you could see the RF, okay, emanating from this, from this vertical here. And then you took it down to the C, what you would find is it would almost look like this because it's a perfect, almost reflective, reflective circle, uh, surface. If you then measure the difference at one degree off the horizon between this one and this one, it'll be about nine dB. So it's like going from 100 watts to nearly a thousand for free. And that's because it's a reflective surface because it's very conductive with all the salt water, okay? If you're inland, and by the way, MMANA, which is software I like to use, because it's easy, um, has that built into it. So you can say, well, I'm in the middle of England. This is the soil conductivity in millisiemens per meters, and so on and so forth. And it calculates the Brewster angle because this particular YouTuber was going on about the Brewster angle and how it affects things. Yeah, we know that, okay? CBIC's written about it. Um, it's been known for hundreds, well, not hundreds of years, but since, since we've been playing with RF, is that a vertical body C will do better. That's right. Now I'm in the middle of England here, so I've just got average soil. So when I do modeling, I don't try and convince myself it's gonna be better by pretending I'm by the sea because you can put 50 or 5,000 millisiemens per meter in to the, on, on, the, on the software, which we could, uh, have I got that in here? Just let me just quickly so allow me to demonstrate. All right, so let's move that down here. I'll have to zoom into this. So if I just quickly build a uh, 10.2 meter long, we'll put the feed point at the base. This is for 40 meters, 7.2, give or take. There we are. Um, you will see. The far field point look, looks like this. I come down to five degrees off the horizon. It says minus 4.7 there. Because if I came at down at 20 degrees off the horizon, I would be kidding myself. I'm getting 1.8 degrees. Now, most manufacturer manufacturers will tell you, and I think the, yeah, it's 26 degrees, probably the optimum for average ground. This is actually got the ground plumbed into it. Here it is here, the dielectric and the conductivity. If I pump that conductivity up to seawater, 
Well, watch what happens now. <laughs> so we come down to five degrees off the horizon. There. I am 10 dBs better. There we are. So that's why the DX is so much easier if you get, get your vertical down by, by the beach. Right, so that kind of covers the pseudo Brewster angle. It's already uh, really calculated. Let's just talk about free software. This is absolutely free. And like a lot of free software, there's a pro version. So they make their money, okay? But the mathematics of the moment method, which was developed, I think, in the late 50s, 60s, which, and I don't want to, it sounds a bit ostentatious. It goes all the way back, lit, honestly, to Maxwell's equations. If you plumb all that in and get some really clever people in the room and write all this, all this code, because what it actually does, it takes a, an, an antenna, ele, antenna element and it chops it up. That's what the software does, all right? You can do this with a slide rule, all right? You really can. It'll just take you for bloody ever, because if you imagine it, you've got to work out all this, where all this is going to happen, all right? Whereas a computer can do hundreds and hundreds and thousands of calculations uh, to get that right. Now, I know there's a lot of free software we all use, N1MM, which is a call sign as well as a piece of software, Logger Plus, it's called. There's plenty of FL Digi, there's plenty of ham radio, JT65, uh, WSJTX is free. I'll let you, here we are. Come up with a free piece of software you like using and putting it down in the comments because I'll bet you find there's quite a lot. So just because it's free doesn't mean it's bad. All right. And the other thing we can do is we can take a model like this and we can put it into uh, to NEC or some uh, you know, really expensive. You can spend literally tens of thousands of pounds on this and you'll get a similar result within two or three percent. So that, that's when you know the code's working, you see because you get a two element Yagi at 30 feet, you get a vertical, a two element parasitical vertical or whatever else. And as Roly, John and I, we've been doing a lot of this modeling and building in the real world, when the real world starts to uh, be the same as the model, you know, and reflect the two, you go, oh yeah, I'm, I'm on the right path. Right, just because it's free doesn't mean it says bad. One other little thing, just to talk about the Brewster angle again before we, we go on. Is there anything you can do about the pseudo Brewster angle? Well, ON4UN said very little, right? It's already in the maths. Okay, if you are in an agricultural area, chances are I'll be fine. You know, average ground, right? It comes out, this software comes out of the box, average, average ground. You can change the ground, right, and make it really bad. You can change the background and make it really good. I sell antennas, I don't pretend it looks like this. I pretend that it's on average ground, which is 50 millisiemens, I think, or is it five? Five millisiemens, isn't it? Five millisiemens per meter, okay? Which means there it is there. And it looks like that, five degrees off the horizon, is minus 4.7. And a lot of people say to me, oh, well, minus sounds really bad. It's just a figure, right? We call it bananas. And by the way, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to bananas. I have a banana ruler here. Right, so it's not a myth. I have people I talk to that can guide me, all right? If you go out on your own in this world with a piece of knowledge and then double down once or twice, you can get yourself in a pickle. So I check all my facts with a lot of people because with great reach comes responsibility. I don't want you giving you the wrong information. And when I hear the wrong information being published twice in a month by the same person, I think that's, you might believe that and you'll go through the rest of the time thinking something which doesn't exist. Okay, so I don't want any names here. I'm not falling out with anybody or anything like that. I'm, putting, I'm not putting them on track, that's up to them. I'm putting you on track, that's what I'm doing. All right, so there we are. Do you like my new lights? <laughs> we'll see. Now then, I much prefer making video content, which we can all have a good laugh, but sometimes I've just got to do a serious piece of work. And that's what this is. In the meantime, enjoy your radio, enjoy your DX, get your angles low, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.